In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the RIP Manager. Now to best show you this, I'll go to page 2 where I've got some artwork I've already brought in here. And I want to send this to the RIP Manager. Now ordinarily I'd come up and I'd click on this button up here, the RIP button, and that would send this to the RIP Manager, or to the Artwork Manager, sorry, on its way to the RIP Manager. But before I actually do that, I'm just going to show you how else you can get to the RIP Manager. You can click on this file menu here and come down to RIP, and click here RIP Manager or use the shortcut. Or alternatively, you can use this drop down and click on RIP Manager here. So these are alternative ways of getting to the RIP Manager without having to use artwork to get into it, just so you know those things. Now, I'll also explain how the RIP Manager works with the Artwork Manager, which is the intermediary program that comes up, or window that comes up. I'll show that to you in a moment. The Artwork Manager looks at the page bounds, or the page itself, and anything within the page bounds gets sent to the Artwork Manager. So I don't need to select anything if I need to rip it, so long as it's within the page. So it's important you realise that the Artwork Manager and the RIP Manager are page-centric. They're concerned about what's on the page. So I'll show you how you do that. You come up to this button up here, you click RIP, and you can see that this uh, module comes up, Send Artwork to RIP, which is our Artwork Manager. Now we're presented with some uh, options and some tools here that we can select and uh, manipulate and use to set different parameters for the piece of artwork we want to send to the RIP Manager. Now I'm not going to go into those in this particular lesson because I've already covered this in other lessons and you can watch those when you're ready. The main point is, is that you can set parameters in here and options for this job. Now I'll actually do just one as an example. I'll just type in say green grocer sign here and I'll show you what this means in a moment. So anyway we're happy with this and we're just going to send it to the RIP Manager so we just simply click this accept button and our artwork, as you can see, if I select it up here, loads into the RIP Manager, as so. And I'll just show you what I meant before. You see it's got job info here, and you can just see it slightly down here. If I turn that off, it disappears. If I turn it back on, it comes back. It's important that I'm just showing you that from the Artwork Manager, what you set in there comes into the RIP Manager. Okay, well this is the RIP Manager. We've got a preview over here on our right-hand side. It tells us what uh, printer we're using and some sizes here, which is in, uh, important information. On this left hand side we have our management system, so this manages our cut files for, uh, sorry, our print jobs and our uh, print and cut jobs for us. So we have that and that works very much similar to the vinyl spooler. So if you've seen the vinyl spooler lesson you'll understand how this works, but I will explain it to you in, in any case. Now the difference with the RIP Manager and the vinyl spooler is that the RIP Manager actually does quite a lot more things. You've got this job queue here. Now these are previous jobs I've done which I've left in here so I can show you how this works. So that's the job queue. So this is what we do just before we send it, uh, our jobs to the RIP, down here using these buttons. We've also got these tabs here. So we've got some printer settings here, so this is some more advanced concepts and you know the sorts of profiles we're using, uh, you know the printer itself obviously, what media we're printing to, that's where we set these sorts of things. Under the job options here we see a nice preview and if we move this out we can see even a greater, or greater size preview, larger preview. Um, and we get other uh, options that we can apply to this particular job and we have our preview here. So that's what these tabs do. Now in this row of tools here we've got some simple filtering tools, how we actually view some of our jobs, we can turn our soft proof on and off. Soft proof is our um, preview of how the job's going to actually print out onto our printer given the printer we have, the media we have, um, the ink we're using and the profile we've selected. We also have some packing options here uh, and nesting. These things are terrific when you want to group jobs together and print them out in one big run. So if I select, say, uh, hold down shift and select all these jobs, you can see that I can put all these together uh, and I can optimise all of this and I can send this in, in blocks of different jobs here like this. So these are quite advantageous tools. Um, and again, these tools all have their own lessons, so you can go and look at these, in the, these lessons independently of this one to get much more detailed information on how to use these things. Um, I'll just come back here. And down here we have some more options. Uh, for example, we can do step and repeat, etc. We can delete our jobs. We can add print marks such as crop marks and registration marks, uh, the job information. Uh, if we're using a printer cutter, we can put a weed border around things, etc., etc. And down in the bottom right hand corner here, this is where all the action happens. When we're, when we're ready with this job to send it to our uh, large format printer or printer cutter, we can start clicking these buttons here. And by doing that, these things get sent to our job queue and we can uh, rip our jobs, as you can see this one's been ripped, so I could click, uh, I could select this job here, so that's been ripped ready to go, I could click print now, and this would be sent 
directly to our large format printer. So that's how this, this part of this works. And of course we've got some standard menus up here. So we can change things like um, the units we're working if you prefer millimetres or if you prefer inches, whatever you work in. We can also install our printer driver up here. So depending on what printer we've got here, this is how we install the printer driver for it up in here. And that again has its own lesson explaining on how, how to do these things. So that explains how those general uh, concepts work. Now the important thing you need to know when you first use the RIP, okay, obviously you need to come up to here and install a printer driver, that's the first thing you need to do, so you've actually got a printer to work with. And the next thing you need to do is come to the media library, and this is where we set our profiles. Now down here you'll see ICC profile. Now this RIP works with generic ICC profiles. It doesn't use proprietary profiles like the old version of the RIP. These profiles are now or well, the profiles you can use are just standard profiles you can download from, say, the, uh, the printer manufacturer or from the media manufacturer or from other people that have done profiles. Most of them are available on the internet for free. Some you have to pay for. You can make them yourself, of course. And we also supply a lot of profiles with, the, with many makes and models of printers that we support. So you can now just use standard ICC or .ICM profiles. ICC and ICM means exactly the same thing. Uh, and these are, are, as I say, available usually on the internet. So if you go to places like Google or Yahoo, wherever, and type in your make and model of printer and profile, uh, or ICC, you'll find that you can usually download a large number of profiles based on the media you're using, okay, the media that you've got, uh, and the ink set that you're using, uh, you can get a profile to suit. And once you set your profiles in here, we can see how the gamuts work. This outer gamut here, that's our monitor, and as you can see the monitor's got a much larger gamut than say uh, large format digital printer's uh, colour gamut has. Uh, you can see a side view and you can sort of spin it around and see how it works. And you can see your tone reproduction curves here. This is actually not a bad profile, it's quite clean. And we then have a top view of the gamut as I've just shown you before. Uh, and we can also set things like um, ink channels and uh, how our channel splitting works. But again, these things have their own lessons and uh, I encourage you to come and watch those when you're ready. So the first time you use the RIP, it's very important you install a printer driver, uh, you know, from, uh, from the future RIP, um, uh, sorry, from the Vinyl Master RIP uh, selection, and you set your profile. So you just basically you can click Load ICC, and you can just select a, a standard ICC profile, click Open, load it in, click Update, and you can use it. So it's important you understand that that's something you need to do when you first use the RIP Manager. I mean, once you've done these things and you've set this up, you, you ordinarily don't come and change these things very often. But then again, if you're uh, using different printers and you've got different medias, um, it's not a bad thing to be able to come in here and change these things. Uh, and as I say, watch the lesson on the media library, uh, media profile library. That will explain how this all works. So that's the general layout of the... Um, of the RIP manager. I'll just show you exactly how this, this management system, the cut, well when we're using our uh, print jobs here, how we manage these things. I need to show you how these filters work. This filter here will filter out all the print jobs and only show us the actual uh, print and cut job. So if I click on that, you can see it just shows us this print and cut job. Now here we don't see a preview of the uh, the contour cut line because we're, we're actually previewing in print only. If I come over here to print and cut, you can now see it shows us the contour cutting line. Or we can just see the contour cut line on its own. So this is what these previews do. So if we filter out these, um, filter out our regular print jobs and look at our print and cut jobs by clicking on this button here, this is how these filters work. And then we need to just set the preview that we're looking at. And that's how that part of that works. If I turn that off, we see all our jobs as you can see. This, uh, this filter button here, this filters by the job tiles. In other words, where we've got jobs that we've split up, and this is a good example of one here, I'll just go to job options so it's clearer, turn softproof off. You see you've got tile 1 of 4, 2 of 4, 3 of 4, and 4 of 4. So this is a job that's too large to print out onto our current media. In other words, this job, I'll just go to the adjust color to show you, this job in its entirety is far too large, I think it's 96 inches wide by 72 inches high, about 2.5 meters by about 1.8 meters. This job is just far too large to print out to our current media. So what we need to do is split that up, which we did in the Artwork Manager before we got in here, 
So we've split this up in the Artwork Manager. We've come in in our separate pieces as you can see here. And now what I want to do is just filter by my, my tiled, my jobs that have tiles. Click on that button and there I go. I've filtered out all the other uh, print jobs that I had in there and now I'm just looking at this particular print job. So that's what this button does. So that's on and off as you can see. We've, uh, I've explained to you about Softproof. As I've said, Optimize and Rotate and Nest have their own menu, uh, sorry, own lesson and you can watch those. Okay, the other thing I can do too is I can set things like step and repeat. If I go down this golf sign here, this small golf sign, and go to the preview, you can see it's quite small. I might want multiple copies of that, as you can see. So I can use the step and repeat. I can delete my print jobs from in here by clicking delete. As I've said before, I can add things like um, crop marks and registration marks, as you can see, the little registration marks here. I can turn my job information on and off. Uh, I can go down a weed box, all these sorts of things I can do in here. So that's what these tools do here. I can bring those back. The other thing I can do too is if I want to bring jobs back into my current queue I can come into say done here I can select this job and I can just drag and drop as you can see. So the way you can manage your uh, print jobs here is by simply using drag and drop. And the program is quite intuitive in the sense that when I've done something so I've say I've uh, sent this to the uh, if I go rip only and I go into the job queue and I've got this waiting to rip and I go rip now, let's move this out of the way, you can see how fast it rips, this is a small job so it won't take very long, so that's ripped that job there, I go print now, I can move that out of the way, it's already printed it and it's gone, if I go to my pending jobs, you'll see there's that job there, so it's gone into my done uh, folder. So the way this uh, rip manager works, it's quite intuitive, you send jobs from the job queue, they end up in the done folder, and you know I might have to do this job time and time again so I'd go to my repeats here and I could just drag and drop it into my repeats so that whenever I look in repeats there's my golf sign that I want and I can just do it as I need to and deletes a double, uh, a double redundancy once I've deleted a file it goes into my deleted folder and unless I uh, delete it from deleted it remains in the deleted folder so I've sort of got a double redundancy I can delete things and not lose them the first time round but if I come back and delete them again, that's the end of them, they're gone. So that's how the delete works. Now a couple of other little things just before we finish this lesson is this top bar here. If I click on this, it resets this, the, um, the sorting, as you can see. Sorts from lowest to highest, etc, etc. So it's important to know you can sort your jobs like this. You can preview your jobs as, as I've been showing you like this. And um, you can set, or you can go to the help menu if you want to learn more about this particular module. Uh, I've mentioned to you you've got all these uh, menus up here. Don't forget to look at those if you ever get lost. Um, and you can re you can adjust uh, these things here. Of course, in the recording screen, this is a very small window. If I was normally using the RIP uh, as a general uh, program, I would have this much larger, and I'd see a much larger preview here. But for the recording screen, it's a little bit smaller. So that's the general layout and the, and the concept of the, um, of the RIP manager. We have our jobs come in here. If we want to set any parameters to our jobs, we can come in here. We can add our crop marks, etc., or add things here and do copies, etc., etc. We can adjust colors and things. Uh, as I say, these all have their own lessons. Um, we can change you know, things like render intents and the render DPI, in other words, the quality we're printing. We can do all those sorts of things. Once we're happy with our job, we can click RIP only, uh, that'll go to the job queue, be waiting to RIP as you can see. If I check auto RIP here, it will just automatically RIP all the jobs waiting to RIP so I can do them all in one hit and then what I can do is then send them to print now. So it's a fairly logical, easy thing to follow. These tools up here have their own lesson and I encourage you to look at those as well. But that explains how the RIP manager works uh, generally and once again, make sure you look at the uh, other lessons. Uh, just to get a handle on how this whole thing works and all these independent little bits and pieces and you'll find the RIP's actually quite easy to use. Uh, you can get some absolutely spectacular results with it. The printouts and the colours and the, the vibrancy you can get from this uh, RIP module with all the special effects in, in Vinyl Master are quite amazing and by spending a bit of time just you know maybe watching this lesson a couple of times and looking at these other lessons have a look in the manual. Um, understanding things like render intents is important Understanding how Media Library, the Media Profile Library works is important. Uh, once you 
you've sort of got a, a general idea of these things, you'll find you'll be able to produce unbelievably great signage and uh, posters and all that sort of stuff. So that's the end of this lesson.